In this video, I'm going to show an example of how to draw a system described as a differential equation in the form of a block diagram. This is useful if you want a more visual representation of the system you're dealing with, or if you want to solve the equation using a tool like MathWorks Simulink. The example I'm going to show is a single input, single output, or SISO system, but the strategies I show here can be applied to more complex systems as well. I'm going to include timestamps down in the description of this video, so if you want to jump ahead to any point, you can. But I'm going to start just by going over the basic components that we're going to use in our block diagram. So if you're familiar with something like Simulink, you know that there are a bunch of different kinds of blocks you can use to make a block diagram. But for this video, I'm just going to use three simple ones, the summing junction, gain, and integrator blocks. So I'm just going to briefly show how each one of those works, so this way we know what we're working with when we solve our problem. Starting with a summing junction, I draw those as circles, and we have one output, and in this case I'm just going to do two inputs. So I'm going to call this input on the left x, and the one on the bottom I'll call that y, and then I'm going to show little plus signs next to those two inputs to know that they're both positive, and the output is going to be x plus y. We can also have not positive signals coming in, so let's say this time x is negative, and y will still do positive, and this will give us y minus x as our output. For gain blocks, I usually just draw them as triangles, and with some gain constant in them, we'll write k, we have a single input and a single output. So we'll call the input x, and then the output is just going to be our input times whatever is in our gain block. So in this case, it's going to be kx. For our integrator block, I just draw those as rectangles, and inside the rectangle we have 1 over s, and this s represents the, the Laplace variable s, and we have our input and our output, and in this case, I'm going to show the input as x dot, and a little reminder that x dot represents the first time derivative of x, so that's going to be dx dt. And then if we have two dots over the x, that's going to represent the, the second time derivative of x, so d2x over d t squared, and so on and so forth. Just adding more dots is more time derivatives. So if the input to our integrator block is the first time derivative of x, the integral of dx dt is just going to be x. And basically the integrator block is really just the same as a gain block, because if you're familiar with Laplace transforms and how that all works, if you multiply a function by 1 over s, you're really taking the time integral of that function. So what we're really doing here is taking x dot, multiplying by 1 over s, and getting the integral of x dot x. Hopefully those all make sense, and we can use those to solve our problem. So before we get to the example problem, I'm just going to go over the steps that we're going to follow to solve the problem. And I've broken this into four steps. The first step is solve the differential equation for the highest order derivative. Second step, draw out all integrations. Third step, combine signals for a system equation and close the loop. And the fourth step is combine signals for output equation. Um, now this might not make sense right now, but I promise once we get into the problem, all these steps will start making more sense. With that in mind, let's just go right to the example. This is our example problem, and it just says, draw a block diagram to represent the following system of ordinary differential equations in which u of t is the input and y of t is the output. We have two equations. The top equation here is our system equation, and that describes how x reacts to our input u, and then the second equation down on the bottom is our output equation, and that describes the output y with respect to our variable x. So let's look back at our steps and see where we need to start. Step one, solve the system equation for the highest order derivative. So like I mentioned, the top equation is our system equation, so we need to just solve that for the highest order derivative. Um, in this case, it looks like x triple dot is going to be the highest order. Um, so we will just rearrange this equation so that we have x triple dot is equal to 2x double dot plus 5x dot plus 6x plus 
u. So now we've rewritten the equation to solve for the highest order derivative. So we can go ahead and check that one off. Step two, draw out all integrations. This one might not be intuitive, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my highest order derivative. So x triple dot, and this is where we'll start drawing our block diagram. I'm going to label this signal right here as x triple dot and put it through one of our integrator blocks. So one over s. And the output of this integrator block is going to be x double dot because the integral of the third time derivative of x is going to be the second time derivative. Then I'm going to put this through another integrator, 1 over s, and that's going to give us just x dot is this signal. And we can put it through one more, 1 over s block, and that's going to just give us plain old x. Now we've drawn out all the integrations as a block diagram. So that's step two, complete. Then step three, combine signals for a system equation and close the loop. Now this one's probably the most confusing just to read. So just bear with me as we go through it and I promise it'll make sense at the end. If we come back here, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. What we're gonna do is we basically want to make this equation up here represented by our block diagram. So we have x triple dot equal to a sum of all of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the x triple dot signal be the output of a summing junction. And we know that we're gonna have two x double dot, five x dot, six x, and u coming into there. And we don't see u anywhere in our block diagram so far. So I'm just gonna draw that coming in from the left as u and that's a positive sign. And it's gonna have some other stuff added in down from the bottom. So we see that we need to add in two x double dot. So we can just grab our x double dot signal here, bring it down, have a gain of two that we're gonna multiply that by. And then we can bring that over here and I'm gonna draw another summing junction. We'll see why in a second and that's going to have a positive sign. And then we have 5x dot, so we can grab our x dot signal in a similar way, bring it down, multiply by a gain of 5 this time, and I'm going to have another summing junction. I know that one's got a positive sign, and we can combine these two here, Another positive sign. So that's our 5x dot. We already drew our u. So the last part we haven't drawn out is this 6x here. So we see we have our x signal here. So I'm going to grab that, bring it down, have a gain of 6. And this is our last piece. So we won't need another summing junction. That one's also positive. And now all of our pieces are represented in our block diagram. So at this point, if you're worried that we might have made a mistake somewhere, we can go check our work a little bit, and that's pretty easy to do. We can just start labeling some signals. So this signal right here is the output of this gain block, and the input to that gain block is x double dot. So the output is going to be the input times whatever's in the gain block. So 2x double dot. Similarly, this signal right here is going to be from the gain block of 5, so it's going to be 5, and the input to that gain block is x dot, and this signal is going to be 6x, because it's the output of the gain block of 6, times the input, which is just x. So that means that when we go through this summing junction, we're combining 5x dot and 6x, so 5x dot plus 6x, and the output from this middle summing junction is going to add in our 2x double dot. So 2x double dot plus 5x dot plus 6x. And then from this top summing junction, we're going to add in our u. We'll see that this signal right here is going to be 2x double dot plus 5x dot plus 6x plus u. And we'll see that this piece here 
matches exactly what we have on the right side of our equation up here. And we already defined this signal as x triple dot. And if the right side is equal to the left side, then we're all good. So let me just clean this up a little bit and we can move on to the last step. And the last step says combine signals for output equation. If we go back to our problem, it gives our output equation as y is equal to 3x dot plus 9x. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of room here. And I'm also going to copy this down here so we can see it. So this last step is going to be similar to the one before it. And we basically just need to use the signals that we have in this block diagram to draw out this equation. So it looks like we have 3 times x dot. So I'm going to take our x dot signal and bring it up and put it through a gain block of 3. And that'll give us our 3x dot signal. And we have 9x. So x is the signal all the way on the right. And I'm going to just draw another gain block, put a 9 in it. And if we combine 3x dot and 9x, we're going to get y. So just put those both into a summing junction with two positive signs. And that is going to give us our output y. And of course, we could check that really quickly too. We said that this output of the gain block of 3 signal is going to be 3x dot. And this 9 gain block is going to give us 9x. Add those together, 3x dot plus 9x. And that's equal to y, which matches our equation. Let me clean it up. And that was our final step. So now from here, um, if this is all we need for this problem, in this case we did, we can stop here. Um, if you're trying to solve this differential equation, you can take this block diagram and plug it into Simulink and you'll get something that looks like this. And you can just run the simulation and see how this system responds to any input. Um, for this picture, I just put in a step, but you can have any arbitrary input and you can record the output. And the nice thing about the block diagram in Simulink is that you can grab any of the intermediate signals and see what's going on just by putting a scope on them. But yeah, that is it for this problem. So thank you for watching and I hope this helps.